Hello again, there's a chapter four video uh, looking at the for each loop. So let's have a look at this for each pseudocode. Um, effectively, what we're doing um, is we are creating a loop structure um, for a specific uh, collection and then um, repeatedly doing things to every element in that collection. So uh, let's have a look at what we're doing here. Um, we need a for statement at the start of this. Um, we then need um, an open parentheses um, and a close parentheses, and within that is the loop header. Now, that loop header um, is the thing we use um, to get our collection and to set up our temporary variable, which we'll look at in a second. We then um, put a brace down, um, a closing and ending brace. Um, now, for every element um, in that particular uh, collection, uh, everything within these braces gets done to every element in that collection. So the loop body, which is shown here, um, that occurs um, every time there's a element in the list. So for example, if there's five elements in the list, um, then that loop body will be implemented five times. Um, in other words, for each element in a particular collection, do the things in the loop body. So here we have um, a little bit of consideration now um, about the for each loop. If you remember early on, uh, you created the array list um, of type string for the files. Now this was used to store all of the. Um, this was used to store all of the um, of the files. So here's our files uh, variable which we created. Uh, and that stores all of the um, of the strings, which are basically all of our file names. So what we do is we use that files um, name in our um, loop header. So if you see here, then that's the uh, files which we use for that. We then need to create a temporary variable, um, which we're going to call file name in this particular instance. So what we do is we we iterate through the collection um, and for um, for every element in the collection that's um, brace uh, whatever's in that brace in the loop body there gets implemented so in our case um, what we are doing is we're outputting every single file name um, to the screen so uh, this file name gets outputted um, for each element in the list um, the English way of saying this is for each string in the files array list print out each string, or again, um, we could say for each file name in the files, uh, then print out the file name. So let's have a look then at how that looks in terms of an object diagram, what actually happens. So here's our um, object diagram. We can see that we've uh, got our um, files object which is represented there um, and then this refers to that files um, object there. What we do then is we say okay once the uh, brace um, is seen then whatever's in that loop body gets iterated out each time. So the first element in the list is at um, index 0 which is this one um, and then that will get implemented the first time round the loop is done. As that gets to the end, so that will implement this line of code. Once that uh, therefore gets to the second brace or the closing brace, it then starts again um, and then uses the second element in the list, which will be that one that becomes the second element in the list. Um, and then once it gets to the end, second brace again, um, it will then restart at the first brace. Um, and then use the third element in the list. Um, and then that will keep iterating on that, however many elements there are in the list. So let's have a go with that. I've actually implemented um, this method in our music organizer version two. So what I'm gonna do is go right to the of the music organizer and paste it. And I'm just gonna pause this video while I tabulate that. Now just um, pause the video so that I can tabulate that and make it look right. It's very important when you um, create your methods, if you do any copying and pasting, that you make it tabulated so you can follow it easier. 
um, the indentation is very important and as your code gets more and more complicated and you get using more and more loops and methods um, the tabulation makes it really helpful so there's our um, list of files um, I've compiled that and that all works absolutely fine so let's go ahead and try that out create a new music organizer class and now I'm going to need to add a number of file files so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the first uh, file here but what I'm going to do um, is rather than you watching me add loads of files I'm just going to pause the video again and then we'll, you'll come back and there'll be a complete file list okay I've just added a lot of um, music files there five music files so I'm going to go in and demonstrate the method working so you right click on the method um, and then we can list all files um, and those are all the files which I've just added to the music collection again they need the full track um, uh, or they need the full um, address of the track within uh, my folder structure um, but that's the, the basic music player at the moment um, I might, might decide now I want to play elvis4.mp3 so then I can go in um, and start playing remember that it's, it's element 3 um, and then I can start listening to my music so um, let me just pause that for a second uh, that's how to implement um, the um, the uh, for each loop in our particular um, class. So for a quick review of the um, for each loop, um, it's loop statements um, allow a block of statements to be repeated, and the for each loop allows iteration over a whole collection. Um, so. Um, if we're just going to critique that for a second, um, we'll see that it's pretty easy to write and um, the termination um, happens naturally. Um, the thing is the collection cannot be changed is one thing which can't happen, which um, we'll see there's another other ways of um, changing the collection for iteration. Um, and there's no um, index provided. You'll see that um, when we use for loops and while loops, we'll need to have an index later. Uh, we can't stop part of the way through, so um, if we were doing a search um, we wouldn't be able to search and then once it's found a stop we'd have to search through the whole collection um, but it does provide a definite iteration um, i.e. it's a bound iteration so it cannot go into an infinite while loop. We're going to see later that um, one of the problems with while loops is uh, if you don't do it correctly you can go into an infinite loop um, which will just make your program effectively crash. Okay, so um, that's pretty it, uh, pretty much it. Um, uh, any questions before each loop, and we'll look at it in class. See you then.